I really hope that you can hear the audio later because I don't have, I have a love your mic, but ooh, okay, gosh, okay, directly on top. Hello, hello everyone, my name is E. Ozzy, and today we're going to talk about coral, the one and only coral. I don't know if you guys have a different color now that is different from when you're like growing up, but my favorite color has definitely changed over the years. I remember when I was little, it was possibly like green, and I really hated pink when I was younger. Um, and then over the last few years, I think it's really been a blur just like what my favorite color is until recently. Um, I, I definitely think color has meaning, especially if you choose one color in a, you know, a shirt versus another that day. Um, or you choose a different color and design versus another one. It, I definitely think it has meaning um, and that meaning can be um, important. During the pandemic, I did a lot of exploring things, different things here and there. And I um, learned a lot about the ocean and a bit about myself. Um, through all that, um, I le it led to the, the magnificent discovery of coral, coral reefs, and the character coral. So now my favorite color is coral. So what I have found, I will share with you guys today. Um, and it's a lot. It's a lot. So let's dive in. <laughs> no pun intended. So let's start off in the 16th century. So um, during this video, I will be looking at my laptop because I am not a pro at video essays. Shout out to the video essayers, essayists, but I am not. Um, this is really, was mainly for a school project. This is mainly for EOC Studios and our first short film, If Coral Had a Place, which was derived based on the novel that was shown earlier on in the video. If you like animation, with some characters and some symbolism and a little bit of coming of age story go check out the link in the description box below and hopefully it's something you are into but um why not post it right um but yeah let's start off in the 16th century when da vinci was doing his thing um and there was a dancing plague i know a dancing plague and there was quarrels Coral gets its name from the sea animals, polyps, that cluster together to form coral reefs, which typically have bright, vibrant colors. Most historians would agree um, that coral, the color, first appeared as red-pink color in England in the 16th century. During the 1500s, it was the Renaissance period where there was a lot of cultural and artistic development. Um, and rebirth in Europe. Coral found a way to make a presence during this time with artists that admired its duality of being a beautiful color but also could be used for jewelry. And yes, they were fishing out corals to be used for jewelry. I really don't know the logistics, but if you're curious, um, how did they do underwater diving back in the 1500s? Um, they used something called diving bells, which trapped air by water pressure very interesting um even though it's so far far away back they still found a way to do things i don't know I, it seems so crazy to me but that's a fact uh, divers would go in retrieving pieces of coral that would be later turned into necklaces and decoration pieces it can be seen on baby jesus as an amulet in the madonna de senegala by pedro della francesca and the Madonna della Vittoria by Andrea Mettegna, with a coral decoration falling from above as a garland. It was also associated with the female figure back then with the piece Mona Vienna by Dante Gabriella Rossetti. In this piece, coral reflects a strong, confident woman. In ancient times, coral wasn't just associated with Europe and artisans. It was associated with spirituality, and I think that's probably one of the favorite things um, that I've learned about coral, um, of how it was used back then. Coral is an important color in Hinduism and Buddhism. In Hindu, red coral represents the Mulan. Muladhara Chakra. That, mm-hmm. Muladhara Chakra. 
Mulan Hatra Chakra. I tried my best. <laughs> yes, it, it represents the Mulhandra Sakura. Red coral was believed to be um, a powerful stone. It could be a protective stone against negativity, but also increasing physical strength, like healing blood disorders or increasing bone strength. People would wear coral as necklace um, and earrings, many different jewelry types um, carry around them because, you know, it's a protective stone, you gotta wear it everywhere. Um, and that's how we can see many ancient pieces of coral now today. Um, I believe coral as a jewelry piece is a definitely, I guess, cool item to have, but as I will probably talk about later in this video, it's corals are dying um, and they need our help, so we should not be killing them more for jewelry. Um, and just sort of exploring the ancient pieces that exist now or, you know, going to an aquarium and, or underneath the sea to find corals. I mean, that's to say all this jewelry talk leads me to my next point um, in coral. It's the popular culture. Fashion. Fashion definitely has become a prominent thing, I feel like, in my life. Um, um, I like to dress up with different pieces and whatnot, but having the chance to explore um, how coral and the underwater life has um, integrated itself into fashion and fashion designers' ideas has been a great thing to look at and explore. During my search into the fashion industry, I was really interested in looking for a fashion designer that um, could embody the hyperbolic structure of corals into a sort of coral dress, but I couldn't find that. Um, comment down below if you know of any sort of runway looks that sort of incorporated that. Um, but I did find something um, really cool as well. Sense. Sense is a coral reef inspired and responsive dress. There is actually some research articles um, based on this dress. I will say their names, but I also will put the names of the researchers on the screen, as I probably will say it wrong. But researchers Galina Mihaleva and Pat Pataranapur use programmable LED lights to visualize coral turning white, better known as the phenomenon coral ble bleaching. Corals turn white because of various stressors in the environment, such as overfishing, lack of nutrients in water, etc. In their research article, they state that some of their motivations for this project were plastic in the ocean and how this affects corals. They state the LED animation is influenced by the flow of the water, untouched water, keeping the corals alive. All colorful and vivid as a way to embrace diversity through their inclusion. They later go on to say, the dress provides the wearer with animation and color transformations that can map to data derived from a network. When the person wearing the dress moves around, the sensor would pick up the acceleration and use it to influence the visualization. The ide idea behind the feature is that by invading the personal space of nature carelessly, we can make it shut down, destroy it, even if we didn't intend it. I really like how they embody a touchable and somewhat emotional approach to understanding ocean pollution and the vibrancy that we are losing in the corals and the color coral under the sea. This sort of dress I guess tickles my fancy as well because it sort of combines science um, with art which is very poetic I believe. I love seeing the idea of coral, the color in coral reefs being used in popular culture like fashion, um, jewelry, and even books. Did I say books? It's time. The Beautiful Math of Coral, published in May 2021, is about Coral, a Nigerian-American girl who goes to college discovering pieces of herself and intangible things are weaved into nature tech and art. She meets Fernando, a Mexican-American boy who's also a bit lost, and together they go on a journey like no other, where they realize they are just like the beautiful creatures in the sea. Coral reefs. That is my name, yes. <laughs> um, I really don't remember much about me writing this book, to be honest. I don't remember much about me. I don't remember much about what I put in the book. 
um but i do know it grows largely based off of me i do know in my head i wanted her to be like have some similarities to me but also be different so there is this vibrancy to her that um that she has um but there's also this sadness that sort of goes along throughout the story of her going to college and wanting to do something different than what her parents want her to do and trying to find her place in that um and i think a lot of coming of age stories can relate to that coming of age stories a lot of college kids can relate to that and uh, i'm one of them i wanted to you know create that that idea that someone could be being with a lot of energy but like their environment um that they have around them doesn't really always reflect what they are so she goes through her own sort of coral bleaching i would say and i don't know i haven't read the book but maybe she finds her coral color again in the end i'm not sure if i had to read the book but 10 out of 10 i would recommend and this book was experimental um it was my debut book i learned a lot through publishing it and recently i talked to um, a very accomplished author and they they talked about the idea of just you know doing it and publishing it and of course there may be things you would want to change about it but you learn so much through the process of putting your work out there publishing it rather than it just sort of sitting in your draft box and like you debating what you should change next i don't know i and i relate to that i, I definitely think there's things i want to change about her right here <laughs> um and i i want to carry those lessons that i've learned into my next project into my next book or whatever yeah and i think that's the, the process of the coral you know learning their environment and trying to adapt to that and changing um going through your own coral bleaching process and hopefully trying to find your color again um if that made I, that made sense that had to make sense <laughs> basically what i'm trying to say here i think coral um it's definitely not alone in this world of feeling that your environment doesn't really relate to you and so you try to find your vibrancy again that your energy the reason for why you live reason for why you breathe and she finds that through the journey with fernando and herself and i feel like i'm blabbling on and on about my book but i'll stop now <laughs> there are some other honorable mentions of coral in pop culture including the pantone color of the year 2019 was living coral Alexandra McQueen's spring 2012 runway runway looks which did use the color coral um, and also has the free flow watery look in some pieces there's also the jewelry company Tiffany and Co who were using natural coral in jewelry um, but stopped in 20, 2002 and, and now play an active role in coral conservation so good for them oh and also how could I forget everything I do has to be related to BTS duh of course um in their 2020 oh my gosh i i'm going to answer <laughs> yes i was right in their 2020 album b all the members of bts seven of them um did their like own little room a stick a stick a stick did their own like room inspired by them and the bts member jho my favorite um designed a room that included the color coral or what i believe is coral we never heard from him it was really coral not but we heard from sugar um so yeah those are some of the honorable mentions i hope you enjoyed this video um and continue to live in a very coralful world oh that was kind of sweet okay bye